So I recently took a deep dive into minimalism and it is awesome. I love it. So in this video, I wanted to give you a step-by-step -step detailed guide about how to apply minimalism to your life and where you live. And I base these tips about the kind of gods of Japanese minimalism who are Mary Kondo and Fumio Sasaki. So step number one is remove everything unnecessary. So you should take every single item in your house and pick it up and say, does this give me joy? So answer that question. The next question you wanna answer if you're kind of on the fence with the give me joy question is, if I lost this item, would I replace it? If the answer is no to either, you should probably throw it out. So the first step is close. And we will take the most time on this section because it will form kind of the basic framework for every single other thing that we look at. So step one is to collect every single piece of clothing you have. For me, that was a ton of clothing and pile it at one room in your house, in one place where you can see all of it. Step two is to go through every single item and decide if you wanna discard, donate, or keep. Again, you're asking yourself, does this spark joy? And if I lost it, would I replace it? Of course, throughout this guide, I'm gonna tell you to throw away things that don't give you joy, right? But maybe there are certain pieces of clothes that you need for work or you need for life, like a uniform. Obviously, don't throw those things away. But beyond that, most things can go. Seriously, you can throw out a ton of stuff. When I did this, I threw out like 80% of my clothing, which was like eight trash bags full. And in regards to having seasonal clothing or not seasonal clothing or throwing things away, in the end, hopefully, you have few enough items that you can keep them all together. Step number two is books. Take all your books, put them in one place of the room, right, and go through every single one of the books and see, does this spark me joy? Do I throw it? Do I need to throw it away? And I'm going to go against the grain here because Mary Kondo says you really should look at these books and say, okay, if I haven't read it, am I really likely going to read it ever or can I throw it just away? Or if you've already read it, will you ever reread it again? Probably not. You can throw it away. I like to keep a big like kind of storage of a bunch of my books, a bunch of my physical books. But I do love the idea of having like a collection of your top pick books, like your maybe five to 10 books that you love so much that you reread all the time and just having that on display. So the principles and the ideas and the thoughts kind of that you had from these books are constantly reminded in your head by actually just seeing these books. Another popular option, of course, is just to digitize your entire book collection. Now, this might be expensive if you throw away all your books and buy every single book on Kindle, but it's a really good option if you want to minimize to like one little thing from like pounds, hundreds of pounds of books. The next thing you want to go through is papers. And we probably all have old notebooks, old study things like laying around. And really, I know you might think you might need to use it later, but you will not be looking at those notebooks. You will not be looking at your notes later. You can really just throw it all away. If it's textbooks, maybe you can sell them or give them to other students. You really, again, probably won't need to look at them again. If they're legal documents or delicate items, make sure to shred them, I guess. But again, you probably don't need them. Manuals, you can discard. Warranties, maybe I guess you should keep until, you know, the warranty runs out. Um, receipts, you can throw away. Greeting cards or nice cards you get from friends. Again, you can probably throw those and should throw those away. If you really want to, you can take a picture and store it on some online note taping app like day one. And then we get on to miscellaneous, and this is a huge list of every single other thing in your apartment, right? And this is the sneaky place where really we can eliminate a bunch of stuff. Do you really need 50 plates if it's just you in your place? You, you probably only need two plates, maybe one for you and one if you have a guest. That's probably it. What's the point of accumulating like 900 glasses, 900 pieces of cutlery, 900 bowls, plates, whatever in the dishwasher? Really, you only need kind of like two sets of these items. One in case another set is for the guest or if it breaks. You really don't need anything beyond that. And then when you use it, you just wash it and you put it back and that's it. You really don't even need a dishwasher. In the end, if you live alone, you might just need two plates, two bowls, two sets of cutlery, two glasses, two teacups, and like that's it. Imagine how much space you would save. And also, imagine the amount of time you'll save making decisions of what plates to use or what bowls to use or what cutlery to use. You've only got one. So you're only gonna use that one. Some other great places that I found to eliminate things are various cookware. How many pots and pans do you really need? How many spatulas do you need? I had like six. How many spices do you need? Do you really use all those spices? Electrical appliances, pens and papers, spare change, alcohol, non-perishable food items, soap. Have you ever heard of like everything soap? You could use one soap for everything. It's, it's an awesome thing. Then you can start to go into each individual room and take a deep dive on literally just looking corner to corner and seeing, do I need these items? Do they spark me joy or can I get rid of them? And you can take it another level here. Like you could even like look at my apartment here and say, do I need this couch? 
maybe not. Like maybe, like why do I need the TV? Do I really want to watch that much TV? What if I just had like one nice place to sit on and like the rest was space or one nice place to type on and the rest was space. Again, that's too dramatic for me, but these are the thoughts you can have. But if you look at the couch, do I need a hundred pillows? Or maybe I only need like two pillows. Do I need 900 blankets? Maybe you only need one blanket. Okay, so we've eliminated a bunch, a bunch of stuff, hopefully at this point. This is what took the longest for me and will likely take the longest for most people. Now we get to get to the fun part, which is organizing it all together and seeing how it all looks really nice and finely set up. And again, we're gonna go through the same way we did before. So the stuff we eliminated, the first thing we're gonna look at is clothes. We're gonna see how can we organize clothes. And again, I'm gonna spend the longest on clothes because I want you to use this kind of as a basis for everything else. So every piece of clothing you have, again, should have a purposeful place. Everything should have its place. First important thing is you wanna do vertical storage, not horizontal stacking. So if you have a bunch of sweaters, for example, instead of stacking them one on top of the other, you wanna fold them up nicely like you would normally, but then put them in like a cabinet it kind of like this. So this way you can pull out whichever one you want and pull it out just like that. And also you can see every single color. And if there are certain items you need to hang, maybe you want to organize the way you hang them in a certain order. So what I like to do is have my heaviest items on one side towards my lighter items on one side. So maybe I have my big winter jacket on one side and then like my light summer suit all the way on the other side. And finally, a quick tip is don't ball up your socks, right? Because again, they'll all end up in the sock drawer, the endless sock drawer, well, you'll have no idea where the hell to find things. Hopefully you don't have that many pairs of socks, maybe some exercise socks, maybe some formal socks, and maybe some casual socks and that it. Instead of, you know, pushing them all together, we still wanna do the vertical storage, right? So what you can do is fold them together nicely until they stand up nicely on their own, and then you can vertically store them in your drawer. Then for books, again, this is just what I like to do. Mary Kondo would say, put it all on a digital Kindle or throw away everything that you don't read. But I like to think about my books in a two by two square. The first two square is kind of fiction or nonfiction and then read or haven't read. So I organize all my books as either nonfiction books that I've read or haven't read or fiction books that I've read or haven't read. And I organize those in various places of my apartment. So if I'm feeling about reading a fiction book that I've never read, I know exactly where to go. Or a nonfiction book that I haven't read, I know where to go. And then I have my favorite like five or six books in one place. So I, and I have those in places that I see often during the day. That way I'm reminded by the thoughts or the things that go on during those books. Papers, simply, I throw away all papers. Everything can be digitized today. You can take pictures of them, put them on a note storage app, put them on Notion, put them on notes, put them on Evernote, put them anywhere. Finally, miscellaneous items when you want to organize these items. Vertical storage, again here, right? Think of vertical storage. When you open your fridge, there shouldn't be hundreds of things behind it. You should be able to throw everything away to get to the point where you can just see everything in one look. This includes the cabinets. You should be able to see everything when you open it kind of like right in front of you. There shouldn't be tons of different cans behind one another, like coconut milk, then beans and things. You should just have coconut milk, beans, uh, tomato sauce or some junk. I don't know, what do people have in their cabinets? I don't know, just right in front of you. And also you want to create as much space as possible. So in the kitchen, for example, Mary Kondo, what she does is when she takes like her soap and, and her sponge out to wash her dishes, she actually takes them out of a storage space, uses them to wash her dishes, then puts it back because she likes to have that lovely, clean, open space on top of her kitchen, like in her kitchen area. And I think this is a fantastic tactic, right? Because 90% of the time we're not using those items. So why should they be cluttering our space the other times? Just put them away and take them back out when you're going to use them again. Finally, on to sentimental items, the things that are like important in your mind and whatever you think about a lot. Get rid of everything else that doesn't seem important to you and only do the things you're like, oh my God, I love this thing. I remember when I did this, this, and this and put them all together. And you'll have like this force multiplier, one shelf or one place where you're like, I love all these little knickknacks. And finally, the final overarching tip of how about how to actually put minimalism into action is apply it to everything else in life. And this is especially true when it comes to buying new things, right? Eventually you might need to buy new things and it's better to focus on quality over quantity. So if for example, you have 200 dollars to spend, you should buy one nice thing as opposed to two $100 okay things. But even better, of course, right, is to not buy anything at all. I guarantee you, you probably have with you right now everything you will need to live for a significant amount of time in regards to clothes and books and all these kind of other miscellaneous items. This guy named Andrew Hyde, for example, he lived for a year traveling with only 15 items. That's like crazy. That's clothes, toothbrush, like phone, like all those kind of things, just 15. Think about like all the things you travel with daily, like your jeans, your socks, your shoes, your shirt, your backpack, your pe pencil case, your fucking laptop, everything. And you'll quickly get above 15. 
Like I think I was at 10 just there. And importantly, after you've eliminated and organized, you're gonna have a lot of empty space and you're gonna be really tempted to buy one really nice new thing because you're like, oh, I kind of threw away that thing. I want one really nice one now. Don't do it. Enjoy the space, embrace the space. It's the whole point of what we just did. And then briefly, I wanna talk about everything else. The whole point of going through this whole thing is that we can start to simplify our mind and our thoughts. Maybe we can start to do some mindfulness meditation or we simplify our work or our morning routine or our nighttime routine. Just try to simplify kind of all these other things in life. Maybe you simplify your food. Maybe you only drink water. Maybe every night for dinner on a Tuesday, you eat this, just these kind of things. Because again, when we eliminate choices, when we eliminate clutter, we have more mental space more space to focus on the things that really matter, that really push the buck forward. And again, in the end, remember, it's not all about the stuff. We're removing the stuff, we're organizing the stuff so we can focus outside of the stuff on the things in our life, the people in our life, the actions we take, the things that really, really matter. It's not the sweater you wear, it's not the jeans you wear, it's not the fancy alcohol concoction you drink before bed. It's really the people in your life, it's really the actions, it's really the experiences you have that matter. So we're simplifying all these other things so we can focus on the important things. And that's why minimalism is so powerful and has really had a great impact on me. And uh, I'll see you on the next one.